Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary with a knife video. Today I've got a knife that I really like, but you will probably like it even more than I do. Now, the knife is the Zero Tolerance 0808, and there's a lot to love, okay? Really, really a lot of things that are done really well on this knife. Uh, a couple little drawbacks that are not the end of the world, but by and large, uh, very, very well done. Now, what I don't like is, of course, the size, okay? And so, um, Right off the bat, I'll, I'll kind of let you know my bias is that this knife is too small. Uh, certainly it's too small for me, but I know a lot of people really like this size of knife to carry for EDC purposes. And so I will uh, try to refrain from expressing my bias too often in the video. Uh, and just suffice to say that, you know, I think this is a great knife, even though I find it too small. And that probably should tell you how much I actually like it. Uh, it's quite a bit smaller than anything else that I would carry at all um, as a primary EDC. But I actually still really like and do carry this knife. So that just tells you exactly how good it is. So that's sort of my introduction. Let's go ahead and tell you exactly what the size I'm talking about. Uh, this knife is seven and a half inches. The blade is three and three sixteenths and the handle is four and five sixteenths. So that's a good inch really shorter than what I like to carry. Um, the weight on this is a little hefty for its size. Uh, you've got 4.3 ounces, 4.3 ounces, and the, the handle is pretty well half an inch thick. Now those two numbers um, betray something else about this knife. This knife, of course, looks fairly sleek and sort of light and maybe even elegant, but it's actually still got that ZT influence, so the grind is fairly thick, the blade stock is, is reasonably thick, you know, at least an eighth of an inch, and you still have the fairly thick pieces of titanium making up the handle on this knife and a full tie backspacer. So there's still a fair bit of weight here, 4.3 ounces, and that's kind of the, the ZT influence. If you think about the fact that, you know, knives like the 940 or 940 um, Osborne from Benchmade, or the uh, 531 from, from Benchmade, and a few others that we could think of. You know, a Kershaw Leak would be another example. You know, these knives are all super lightweight. You know, they're very small. Uh, Spider Quidelica, you know, three ounces or so. This is four ounces, over four ounces, just over. Uh, so it is fairly heavy for its size, but again, that's, that's kind of ZT sticking with its, you know, overbuilt, sort of moniker, okay? Uh, now, let's do some comparisons here. These are all knives that I would normally carry. Uh, I've got one that I'm kind of saving for the end. So there it is compared to a paramilitary two. One of the things this knife does well is edge J blade to handle ratio. Uh, that is how much blade you get uh, folded up here. Um, and if you consider, if I put these cutting edge to cutting edge, I'm trying to see if I can get that on the camera so you can see it. Notice that the cutting edge on these two is almost the same. Now, most people are probably aware the Para 2 does have a fairly short cutting edge for the length and size of knife that it is. Another good comparison is the T101 Thor. Uh, this is a flipper with ball bearings as well. You can see again though that it's quite a bit bigger and both the, the Para and the T101 Thor are sort of on the small end of what I like to carry. Now this knife, the ZT804, this is the 808, this is the 804, uh, both Todd Rexford designs, both ZTs. Um, this knife is sort of this knife full grown, although I do wish, I think this would be worth making in a larger size. It'd be awesome if, this, if they came out with, you know, an 808XL. Um, not really ZT style, but uh, that would be on my wish list, along with many other knives that I wish were, were bigger. So anyway, there's those two side by side. And this comparison, I think, is rather helpful. Both of these are Rexford designs. Both of them are from ZT. Both of them, you can even see, you know, the handle shape is fairly similar and the lines. Uh, one thing I have to say about this, while we're on comparisons, um, Todd Rexford seems to do a really good job of getting sort of simple, modern lines that still somehow have a fairly classic knife look to them. I'm not sure exactly if I'm getting that across right, but you know, this this has that look of a knife. It's not like a Mikel Williamson or something where you kind of look at it and go, what is that? Or, you know, it's, it's really a departure. There's still 
uh, Todd Rexford designs are still fairly traditional in the sense of they, you know, you look at it and you go, yeah, that's that's kind of what a knife feels like it should look like to me. Um, but he all he does it with a very simplistic, modernistic twist that is very appealing to a lot of people, myself included. Let's go ahead now and move on to the blade, and I will zoom in here a little bit so you can see kind of what I'm talking about when I point out details. That is, if the camera will cooperate. There we go. Okay, so let's get this in focus. So you can see that sort of uh, modified drop, modified clip point design. You know, it's sort of a Warrencliffe blade, but there is a distinct clip here. Notice if you look on the top, it's a real corner. So in some ways that classifies this as a clip point, uh, sort of a, a modified clip point or Warren, modified Warrencliffe. Really, really cool, really, really useful blade shape. I will say this cuts well, even though it is fairly thick behind the edge. If I turn it this way, look how much material is there. So this is a, a fairly robust blade, even though it's sort of on a, a fine, smaller knife that's really not designed for hard use, it's designed for EDC. Uh, but the blade is really, really cool. Of course, I also love just the aesthetics of the swedge and the grind lines and how they carry the stone wash from the handle up onto the flats of this blade. It looks really, really good. By the way, notice that this side of the knife is very, very empty. There is the, the zero tolerance here, but you really have to look to see it. Okay, so I, I, one of the things I really like about this knife is that they've kind of backed off the bannering just a little bit. Okay, not not crazy. There's still on this side it still says you know Rexford S35VN and all that, and then the uh, the ZT logo down here. But I know we're focusing on the blade right now. I love the grind lines in that S35VN steel, and of course this steel is going to perform really really well. And this happens to be this knife razor razor hair popping sharp, which is always fun. Now, what about lockup and deployment? So essentially, let me just give you an overview of blade before I move on, I guess. Uh, you can see though, there's sort of a bit of a recurve developed. I've seen a few of these like that. Anyway, not a big deal. Really, really like this blade. It's S35VN, so takes an edge really well, holds it well, high corrosion resistance, all the things that we look for in a modern folder with a high-end steel okay now let's move on to the lockup and deployment that is one of the really really impressive things about this knife if you ask me about the detent on this knife i the only thing i could say is perfect okay you say is it too stiff is it too soft it's it is it's like the story of the three little bears it is just right okay really really well done on the detent on this um, and, and consider that it's a little tougher with a blade of this size because with a larger blade you can build up quite a bit of momentum. So a blade like this, the, the mass of that blade allows for quite a bit of momentum to get built up and therefore uh, it's going to flip out pretty hard. A smaller blade, because there's less mass, doesn't do that quite as well. So it doesn't develop the same amount of inertia and yet this can deploy really fast, really hard. Uh, so the deployment itself on the ball bearing uh, pivot is excellent, excellent, excellent. Does have that mirror polished uh, decorative pivot screw on the show side, and it is um, a hex screw on the other side or a hex head on the other side. Uh, it's stainless steel lock bar insert as well as now this is always really hard to show, and I don't think I can do it. You might be able to anyway. You'll have to kind of look in there. There is a stainless steel lock bar insert, which is great. Uh, Lockup is fairly early. Now, that's one thing. Hold on. Try to get the light in there so you can see the lockup. Um, one thing that you don't really have to worry about when you've got a stainless steel lock bar insert, the whole idea there is to make it wear a lot longer. So, that, the earliness of the lockup on any of these modern ZTs with the lock bar insert is actually not that big of a deal. And probably later is better than earlier because the later the lockup, the more solid the engagement you're going to get. Okay, uh, but very, very solid. And so what I can say about lockup and deployment on this is extremely well done. It is a titanium frame lock. Um, it's very nice and comfortable to actuate. Uh, really, really well done on lockup and deployment. Just smooth and fast. And if you're the kind of person who likes to flip your knife, this is one that is 
as fun or maybe even more fun than any other knife that I've played with. It is great. You could sit there watching TV and flip this for a long, long time without getting a lot of finger fatigue or wear. All right, let's move on to the handle. Uh, the handle is solid stone washed titanium with a full backspacer. And normally this backspacer is mirrored. This one isn't. Uh, the previous owner took some scratches out of it. I think I'm going to send this away and eventually you'll see a mirror polish on here and probably blue anodizing and likely a deep carry clip in blue as well. So since we're talking about the clip, it is reversible right or left side carry. It's not deep carry and I think it needs to be. Just look, you know, if my finger's at about the halfway point of the knife, you know, the clip extends well past the halfway point. Maybe we could move that way even a little further. The clip extends well past the halfway point. To me, the clip is just a little too big for the knife. It does function extremely well, and there's, I've never had an issue carrying it or having it not fit in a pocket or not come in and out of a pocket the way you want to. Nothing like that at all. Uh, but I just kind of think a deep carry clip that was a little shorter, maybe it ended about here, would fit the knife a little better. Uh, it does have the lanyard hole, and the lanyard hole does go right through that titanium backspacer. In terms of ergonomics, as I said before, this is a little small, so it, my, my hand, you know, I can get all four fingers on it, which is nice, but my hand is not going to, you know, there's, there's a little less real estate than what I like to see on there. Okay, not the end of the world, but just a little small. Very, very comfortable, though, in any grip you can think of, just because of the fact that it's just a standard sort of size, you know, it's, I mean, a standard sort of, it's, it's a modified rectangle or a rectangle, you know, and I'm talking about this shape here. It's a rectangle that just has rounded edges, which is basically, you know what I mean? It's, it's going to be comfortable. How could it help but be comfortable? Except, as I said, just a little bit small. Uh, let me go ahead and back out. And I'll give you my overall impression on this knife, which, if you haven't guessed by now, is excellent. Okay, everything is very well done on this knife. The fit and finish is well done. The look, I really, really like. The flipping is outstanding. And all of these Rexford ZTs have flipped really, really well. Uh, this one is just as good. The... Um, 801 was fantastic and this one is too. So that's one of the things, you know, if, if you like to flip your knife and especially if you like a knife that flips well without being, you know, zero tolerance has that, uh, whatever they call it, like hashtag horsepower where essentially all they've done is make a really stiff detent that's hard to deploy. Well, uh, these get a great flipping action just as good as any of the uh, high horsepower ZTs, but they don't wear out your fingers nearly as bad. And that's true of all of the, the Rexford ZT collabs, this one included. So overall, great knife. And if you aren't if you're not like me and you don't mind a knife that's this small, you know, probably just an amazing knife, one that you're gonna absolutely love. Hope you enjoyed the video and we will talk to you soon.